If I want his life, see to it that yours is life also. Walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Jeremiah 7, 23. In our last four lectures we have seen the terrific power at the disposal of man, the profound knowledge and constructive application of the subtle and profound law of thought is absolutely necessary for mankind to understand for his own benefit. If man does not understand the power of thought and the action of thought and reaction, then he is bringing trouble upon himself. The difficulty is that we are caught up in our thought and our reactions. We react to one thing and another. And immediately we are caught up in our reactions, then we begin to think. Our thoughts bec become active and we set in motion a train of causes and effects if we, we do not know where they shall end. But if we know that we, how our thought acts and how we do create those causes and effects, then we will discern our thinking and by doing so we will understand what we are doing. It is self-revealing, self-revealing, self-knowledge is the only thing that releases people from the difficulties in which they create themselves. Therefore we see that in our relationship to one another is self-revealing. Unless this relationship is self-revealing, then we will not know ourselves. How are we related to each other? What do we think when we find, when we speak to each other? What is our thoughts, our mind? Are we poker faces? Or how do we go about? Do we love or do we try and, and, and uh, overcome certain conditions? Or are we greedy? Or are we using our friends and relations for our own benefit? How, are we using our friends? How, what is our relationship? If we kind of discern what we are doing, we do not know what we are doing, then we will not be revealing ourselves. But if we do reveal ourselves through our relationship, we will become aware of ourselves and the conditions in which we are creating. <coughs> Unless you understand the conditions in which you are creating and how you are conditioning yourself, you will never free yourself. Freedom comes from self-revealing. That's the only way that freedom comes. Without it, there is no such thing as freedom because you're caught up in your own cravings, your beliefs, your desires, your hopes, past and the future. <coughs> the present is not understood because the shadow of the past is on the present. The future is also preventing the present from being what it should be because of your hope. You're always living in the future when you can never create in the future, you only can create now. Therefore we must see this great truth. I want to show you clearly that the only process of freedom is the self-revealing process which we enable to see ourselves completely and see the self. What the self is doing. How are you, how are you reacting? How are you creating your thoughts? What are your thoughts and how do they arise? Do you arise from things external to yourselves? Do you arise from internal feelings of craving, so forth, desire? Or <clears throat> are they thoughts that are really created from that particular spirit that is in itself the only power existing and its freedom? If then you have freedom, your thoughts will be free also. We see clearly how we can use the law of magnetizing the ether to our great advantage. We also see that the same law will act against us through our ignorance of this law. We also see that we can whip up the eons into motion and induce activity throughout the whole world and beyond. <coughs> it was by this method and with this knowledge that the Master silenced the storm and did many wonderful things which are discredited by the ignorant today discredited by the ignorant today because they do not understand the mechanism of which and how thought is produced and how thought acts. If you are not aware of these things, then you are caught up in your own desires, your cravings and your ignorance. Yet by their own ignorance they have used the same law unconsciously against themselves. 
the very law that Jesus used to silence the storm, the very law that he used to do these great miracles, men disbelieving these things by their ignorance, he uses the same law unconsciously against himself. Throughout history we have seen this taking effect and in our own times we have witnessed demagogues who have arisen in our midst and with their carefully planned oratory they have raised indignation and anger in the multitude who have caught up in the vicious circle in which they are destroyed along with their demagogues. How true are the words if you use force to overcome force, force will remain. The only way to overcome force is by love, so that love will remain. <clears throat> so we have seen throughout history this great truth. <coughs> ignorant demagogues, ignorant of the law of thought, if they knew the great truth that thought is like a missile <coughs> projected from a platform and after it does complete circuit, it returns to the platform from which it was created. And it is always the same way. It is nature. Drop the pebble in the pool, <coughs> the ripples of the water will go flow out to the edge of the pool, then gradually they will come back again and be silenced at the very point where the pebble was dropped. And <coughs> it is the same with thought. <coughs> It moves in ever-widening circles to the end of the confines of which it can reach because of the power by which it has been projected and returns to the point from which it was created. So our destructive thought <coughs> comes back <coughs> to roost on the one who creates it. That is why Jesus knew the law very carefully and he said, love your neighbor as yourself. He was given you a protection against your own ignorance. There was no use of him explaining the law of thought and how thought operated. But he gave the fundamental principles so that man would not destroy himself. The methods generally used by ignorant demagogues is to hold thoughts of anger and resentment. These cause the ether to be magnetized with the result that their words add fuel to the fire. The fire already kindled in the ether waves which speed like lightning amongst their hearers. No individual can escape the havoc of the magnetic circuit set in motion which has prepared the ground for the reception of his words. Each mind being in the receptive state falls prey to the vicious circle that surrounds it. Each mind being in that particular state of receptivity is a target for the thoughts and emotions of a demagogue little knowing that this force that has been set in motion is really the destruction of the individual who receive it, receives it as well as the demagogue who creates it. So each individual becomes a medium repeating the thought and words of the speaker. This vicious whirlpool gathers speed until the whole nation is whipped into action. Destruction is a result uh, which must eventually recoil upon them and their demagogism. So it has been the law from time immemorial that man has never By doing so, you can see clearly how destruction comes upon the people and upon the demagogues and those who create those anger, thoughts, resentment, and so forth. It is entirely and completely the law that existed from the time immemorial, and if you look back through history, you will see how it is acted through the whole of the countries.
through all of the nations, through all of the empires, have come down as far as we can read, as far as memory goes. How can it be otherwise then? How can we escape then this terrific power of the magnetizing of the ether by ignorant demagogues, by ignorant people, by understanding the mechanism by which it works, by understanding yourselves, to discern your own thoughts and emotions, and the motives behind them, a self-revealing process so that the self can eliminate all those conditions and extricate the self uh, from uh, the, these reactions. If you are conditioning yourself, you must know how you are conditioning yourself. And unless you know how you are conditioning yourself, you are still conditioned. But if you can recognize how you are conditioning yourselves, then you can free yourself. And these lectures are for the purpose of revealing the mechanism, revealing the methods upon which thought travels. These lectures are scientific, they belong to the to what we call <coughs> the ancient atomic philosophers that knew more about the atomic theory than even our scientists knew even know today. So each individual becomes a medium repeating the thought and words of the speaker. This vicious whirlpool got us speed until the whole nation is whipped into action. Destruction is a result which must eventually call upon them and the demagogues. Each individual unaware of what is happening thinks that his thoughts are his own not realizing that they have a false emotion and reaction to the speaker's thoughts and words. Yet if one man in the audience understood the law of magnetizing the ether, he could destroy the effect of this disturbance and cause an internal peace by his own internal peace. A thought so projected could offset much strife which we witness in our midst. Think of the slaughter, pain and misery that could be averted by minds who know the law of magnetizing the ether. Think how much beauty and harmony that could be produced in this way. <coughs> when you come into this hall in the beginning, I don't have to speak to you and lull you into a state of semi-trance so that you can get quiet and peace within your soul. I don't have to talk to you with body words that you can think into your mind so that these body so-called words can create some feeling within yourselves. That is not the peace I want to give you. That is a mental state you have, not a real peace. A real peace is an internal peace. It doesn't belong to the mind because the mind has no peace. It never had any peace and never will have any peace. Because in the mind there is always the opposites, in confusion and in conflict. And if you search into your mind you will see how your mind is in conflict. But when you come into this room and I say we will have a few moments silence <coughs> peace it is not a word that is said unless I know this internal peace you will never know it it's through your sixth sense you obtain it a sixth sense which is the consciousness within yourself and as this internal peace is felt so does every consciousness feel that internal peace because it is the one consciousness that is permeating you all. My consciousness is God's consciousness. God's consciousness is your consciousness. We seem apparently separate, 
but there is no separation. The very substance that makes up your body is the ether that penetrates everywhere. You cannot divide ether, you cannot separate ether anywhere. It supports all matter, it passes through all forms, it passes through the very walls of the atoms, it carries the magnetic vibrations into those walls of the atoms. It can, through ether, the, the atoms can be transformed, and so the form. So here we see the law of thought, which is electromagnetic in its nature, passing carried through the ether into the very consciousness that is within yourself. Therefore, these are vibrations that we recognize if we are six cents and we have a peace. Unless that peace is within you. You can never create that peace outside yourself. You can never externalize that peace if it's not within you. Because the outer <laughs> is the result of the inner. What is in the inner, the outer shall be. <coughs> that is why Jesus knew perfectly well that if he condemned anyone, he would be condemned himself. And if any of you condemn any passion, you are already condemned. What is in your consciousness is what you are producing yourselves. What you create, what your consciousness thinks and creates, so do you create within your own mind and body. And these pass through the very cells of your body, causing a transformation to take place. Therefore, if you are caught up in condemnation, you will find that your body and your mind will be affected by that condemnation. You can't escape it. It's in another impossibility. For every thought you think must pass through your own body, through your nervous system, and every cell of your body must give voice to that thought. And then it passes out into the ether to be caught up in other minds who are similarly situated, thinking in similar ways. So you are adding misery to others as well as to yourselves. Jesus said, Love your neighbor as yourself. Do good unto those who injure you. What a, a, what a knowledge of this tremendous power of thought. Each individual unaware of what is happening thinks that his thoughts are his own, not realizing that they are the false emotion and the reaction to the speaker's thoughts and the words. Yet if one man in the audience understood the law of magnetizing the ether, he could destroy the effect of this disturbance. I can remember a long time ago, not very long ago, but there were hundreds of people who, who saw this demonstration, and that was down in Cape Town. It was when I was here 15 years ago. I, I gave a lecture in the coffee house, a coffee house in Cape Town. Now, as you know, anybody who knows this coffee house in Cape Town, when there's a wind blowing, you cannot hear yourself speaking because the windows rattle and everything rattles all over the place. There was a strong wind blowing in Cape Town. I couldn't give my lecture, there was nothing impossible at it. That was just unless I did something. But I recognized this truth, even at that time, that even the winds and the other conditions could be silenced and the storm could at least be silenced around us Within the, within the confines of these walls and uh, words I said be still when I said those words be still there was no sound whatsoever the windows ceased to rattle some people the reaction upon the crowd was mystifying because some people said he thinks he's God. Other people say, the sound has disappeared. Has the wind dropped outside? What has happened? I took no notice of their thoughts and their words. 
I went on with the lecture. At the end of the lecture, I said, now you can rattle as much as you like. And they started to rattle again, just the same as it did before. You can go down to Cape Town and ask people who were there, and they will tell you how true that demonstration was. But I knew this, that there was a force interpenetrating every wall there. There was ether, would carry the vibrations of that thought and would affect the building in such a way that it would close the atoms and seal the atoms from these vibrations that were brought about by the storm. The inner, the inner was greater than the outer. And that is how Jesus knew that he could also silence the storm, walk on the sea, and do the many things that he did do. These things that he did, people, ignorant people, think that they are myths. Only those who understand the law underlying these things can understand how they were done and know that they were not myths, but the actual demonstration of the consciousness of God inherited and established in man. The question I want to ask you is, have you discerned your own thoughts to see if you are adding to the misery of the world through your ignorance of this law? Through ignorance, each civilization has destroyed itself by this very law. Jesus, knowing this, laid down certain precepts which he knew would save mankind. Love your neighbor as yourself, do, uh, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, etc., etc. As we read his words in the New Testament, we realize now the importance of them in our own lives at this present moment. There was never a time in the history of man that man was in greatest danger than he is at this very time. All over the world, everywhere, there is antagonism between groups, between societies, between religions, between ideologies. And man against man, father against son. Here we see it coming in the unrods in humanity. And humanity has not yet understood the cause, because the cause is within himself. He thinks the cause is outside himself. never such a stupid time as now. Through this ignorance I believe that man will regain his heritage by discerning his own ways that are false and leaving behind all the teachings that are false also and begin to think for himself and find for himself within himself is that peace that understanding that will enable him to do as the master said love your neighbor as yourself it is these important questions I want you to answer satisfactorily to yourselves in such a way that they challenge you to the very utmost how powerful is the invisible magnetic wave of a thought that pervades the ether to magnetize it? How can this magnetization be combated? Is there a practical and scientific basis upon which we can work to eliminate the effects of thought waves that destroy man in his ignorance of this great science? I have told you in my previous lectures to you that 
A thought wave is equal to the power of the mind that projects it. <coughs> My previous lectures have been given to make you aware not only of your reactions to the external world, but also become aware of your own reality, the source of your being. Without this preliminary training, you would be all at sea and at the mercy of the storms that surround you. Is it not that you must be aware all the time? Jesus said, watch and pray. Just means exactly what I say. I'll be Come aware of your own thoughts, your emotions, your desires. Always, continuously, in the present. Never mind the past or the future. The past is a memory. It's a thought probably buried in your consciousness or in your mind, somewhere in the memory cells. But if these memories of the past are influencing or overshadowing the present, you can never be aware. But if you can be aware now, these memories will come to the surface and we will be discerned and completely eliminated. Because that which is in the mind and is not discerned and understood will crop up again and again until such time it is, is, is understood. That's why you have dream after dream of the same thing. It is because there is something in your mind you have not understood, you have not discerned. If you could eliminate all thoughts from your mind, all memories and know what they are. Memories, effects and things that cannot affect in any way the reality of the spirit. No matter what you did and what you did not do, you must see them clearly before you so impersonally that they can have no effect upon you. Therefore your mind will be cleansed and free. Guilt and self-guilt and all these things which harbor upon the mind of the individual destroying his presence destroying the very presence of his presence now because he feels that he has done something this and that that has destroyed him or has brought him to the brink of despair and he runs for somewhere to ask for forgiveness why the very forgiveness is within himself because God dwells within every soul. He holds nothing against anyone. In the recognition of this truth, there is freedom. Why the Catholic religion recognized this long ago and saw that how a person could be freed from all their guilt by coming to the priest and asking for forgiveness. And as they said forgiveness to other were forgiven and they've gone free. Their mind was free. The burden was taken off them. What a candle, what a power then the, the, the priests have upon the people. The greatest power on earth. But if man could think for himself, he would know that he could free himself. Because the very God that is within him is the only freedom he ever has and ever will have. So if you seek outside for yourself, you seek an authority, therefore you destroy yourself. A thought projected into the ether must start from one mind and thus create similar impulses <coughs> in other minds with the result that the repeated impulses of the original wave impulse are increased a million times. The elimination of a thought wave can only be accomplished by a thought wave that superimposes the destructive one, transmuting it. There is no other way in which a destructive thought wave can be combated. There is no other force that can stand in the way of a thought wave with the velocity of light vibrating at a tremendous speed of millions of times per second, whirling through the ether, sweeping the ether's passive etherons into motion and activity. Therefore we know that there is only one way of doing it, peace, internal peace. If I withdraw my consciousness, which is one consciousness, from any thought that I have created, it will fall into nothingness. If the infinite consciousness withdraws its consciousness from all the creations of the universe, which we call a day of Brahm, which takes billions and billions of years to come into operation, if the infinite consciousness withdraws itself then from the phenomena that we see throughout the universe, that phenomena would disappear into the substance of which it rose. 
into the essence of which it rose. And that essence will become quiescent and quiet and peaceful until the beginning of another day of wrong when the consciousness of God becomes more active into the universe and creating another universe in form for man to solve again in a greater and greater way. Here is the consciousness of God in man. Little does man know that this power is inherited in within himself. Little does he know that the consciousness of God is working in through the consciousness of man for the purpose of this great cosmic scheme of bringing about the perfect state of humanity. The passive etherons waiting silently are struck with tremendous force by these electromagnetic impulses, changing them into a gigantic force of devastating tornado which create whirlpools of great magnitude affecting the minds of the people. Can you stand in a crowd and resist the effect of martial music played with gusto? Can you resist the pathways of a nation whipped by, up by propaganda? Can you resist the emotion of fanatical crowds singing a national anthem? Can you resist the power of an experienced orator? Can you resist being carried away by a religious revival? Or any of these things, good or bad, can you stand alone and hold that internal peace that passes all understanding in the midst of all this and more? Answer these questions calmly and honestly to yourself. This is being aware. That is being aware. Not being caught up in any of these things, which are good or bad or indifferent, but having that internal peace that belongs to the Almighty, and you, and me. That is the silencing of the storm. Unless you have peace in your own soul, how can you have peace beyond it? Unless you have peace within your own soul, how can you silence the storm? <coughs> Unless you have love in your heart, how can you heal your brother? You think you can heal him by your mind? Never. There is no such thing. It has been proved that a thin thread of wire almost invisible to the sight of the eye traveling at a high speed and vibrating at a high rate of vibration can cut through the trunk of the largest tree that stands in its way. A small thin wire as thin as is taking place in that machine vibrating at a high rate of vibration can cut through the biggest trunk or the largest trunk of any tree that stands before it. Such is the fate of any material that stands in the way of the invisible, inaudible onslaught of a thought wave generated by a concentrated mind. The active, intelligent, powerful, invisible magnetic impulse passes into the core and pores of, pores of the atom, annihilating them. <laughs> Impulses pass into the core of the porous atoms, annihilating them. Scientific experiments in electrical laboratories have shown that a thin, fragile piece of straw or a feather charged with high electrical impulses can twist the steel shaft, can twist it and turn it in any way it pleases. A mere little feather, a thread, Why? Because everything is electrical. Why is it so that the sound is? That tone will split the atoms, destroy that form, smash it into nothing. That is the knowledge that vibrations, that science 
by vibratory science is bringing to us at this very moment. And someday one is going to strike upon that particular note. And if it comes, woe betide humanity. Deeper is full of conglomeration, conglomerate mass of thought waves that are continually annihilating each other. From the thought of a, from the front, thought of a primitive native to the other, thought waves are being dissolved and resolved into a network of conglomeration of thoughts. Yet one concentrated thought from a concentrated mind that knows the source of thought and the law pertaining to electromagnetic impulses can pierce the conglomeration and transmute it into an active force to create or disintegrate. The powerful impulse of a concentrated Y wave, electromagnetic wave, emitted from a consciousness that is aware has a tremendous power. This was the power the Master had and still has, <coughs> and yet man, through his ignorance and non-acceptance of the truth, the Master spoke, will have to learn his lesson through his ignorance. Intelligent comprehension of this great problem is not enough. There must be a knowing beyond mind of an infinite power beyond all mankind. <coughs> there must be a conscious awareness of a creative force that stands above and beyond man's creation. It is not a belief, for a belief is of the mind itself. I cannot give you the answer to this, yet everyone who searches deep enough will find the answer. And one day when the mind of man is turned in the right direction, man will produce a new age. Some call it the millennium. <laughs> you must search in your mind for this abstract thing that is behind all creation. But you shall not find it. All you will have in your mind is about an idea of it, an image of it, <coughs> a belief that it exists. But that's not it. How then can you reach this particular state <coughs> of awareness of something that is beyond the mind? Only by discerning everything that is in the mind and everything that is relative and then you will find there is something there that is not relative. It stands alone and complete in itself after everything else has been discerned. It stands alone and yet becomes a pinnacle in itself complete behind all creation. It is a knowing beyond mind. It is something that only comes to you when you sat everything in your mind of neutrality, knowing everything that is false, then there is a truth comes, a freedom is brought to you, and you know that you and God are one. There is no separation at all. It's been a myth, it's been an illusion. Then in that peace knows no opposition, that there knows nothing that is contrary to it, knows no opposition, knows no opposing force, knows no conflict, knows no opposites, aware of itself, complete, 
not peace. You will find freedom. How can you find freedom if your mind is in turmoil? <coughs> You've got nothing to discern why it's in turmoil and what the turmoil is. Jesus said that the serpent was raised in the wilderness so that the Son of Man be lifted up. I have in the past explained this symbolism to you. The Son of Man must become aware that he is the Son of God, not born of the flesh or of the will of man, but of the Spirit of God. If you give flesh power, if you get the will of man power, then I tell you, you know nothing of the Spirit of God. Then the thoughts of man will be transformed by the sons of God. The law being that nothing is lost in the universe, but only transformed and changed. So the old will pass away and there will be no more gnashing of teeth and our tears will be dried up. And there will be no more death the former things will have passed away we will be transformed and changed transformation is the only thing that takes place the only thing that is permanent in the universe is change transformation continuously going on all the time yet that which is causing the transformation remains unchanged as it was from the very beginning. I change not, yet I am the cause of all change. That within me is changeless, but that within me is causing continuous change. And the only permanent thing in me is change, but that which causes change remains unchanged, eternal, and ever present. Oh, could I give you this? to your mind to you to become aware of but what use would it be if I added your sum up and give you the answer would you know the sum if I give you the answer to the sum what would, good would that do you unless you cut it up for yourself and there find the answer within yourself that is the only because then you will know the truth, your truth, not my truth. You will know your song, not my song. You will know your note, not my note. So we see the law now clearly that by our intelligent thinking and knowing and understanding, these thought waves that man created to destroy himself, if not fed, becomes weak and are arrested in their own etheric domicile. Their magnetizing influence declines and with the fire extinguished they become dormant without their, within their own nucleus. Many thoughts never generate sufficient power to materialize in the physical plane. They weave into incomplete forms, failing to receive nourishment from generating minds. They lose that cohesion and grip on the atoms which they had originally put into motion. And the half-finished ethereal thorns disintegrate. Scroll after scroll, we down our weary shells. The only point of ignorance is centering ourselves. So we see glimpse thinking is of no good. If you want to create a thought to send a thought into the atmosphere, it must be a thought that is sent from a concentrated consciousness, a consciousness that is aware. It then takes hold of the etherons and the ether and begins to whip them into motion according to the fall. And as the ether takes its through, it spreads throughout the ether and magnetizes every portion of the ether of its power of the magnetic waves sent in motion. And you can feel it 
the North Pole and the South Pole, and the way up in the heavens. There is nowhere where you cannot feel it. Just as you can hear a radio wave up seven, ten miles in the air, you can feel it right across the whole of the world and beyond. So does the, the magnetization of our magnetic, electromagnetic wave of thought do the same thing. But those who are sent out, many of your own thoughts, the most potent thought of your own is very often destructive because it's caught up in the emotion, because you're caught up in the emotion. And as you think in your emotion, so you create destructive vibrations which cause a further kindling of fire which you has already been produced. <coughs> so the ignorance of man is caught up in his own emotion. Father destroys himself because of his ignorance. When you're in a state of emotion, thoughts move up into the consciousness that you're unaware of. Fear, for instance. And any other thoughts that are caught up in your emotions become stimulated with this emotion. And the intensification of this thought is so powerful that you always manifest through your body at once. It sets in motion the atomic structure of your body. Wave after wave of these thoughts moving through the very cores of the walls of the atom, transforming them into the thought which you hold in the state of your emotion. Little do you know the trouble you create within yourselves. If you know this law then of creation, the atoms of your body shall be retained in their original state instead of becoming old. run down by the feelings you have in your body. You react into your body feelings and your mind then causes further reactions setting in motion further electromagnetic waves which cause further destruction. Oh, could I make you know the power that is centered in yourselves? With this so understood, a new world would appear overnight, for man would free himself from the prison of his own making. The last and greatest war will be the battle of minds, the most dangerous of all weapons. The outcome is assured on the side of Christ. weapons of war, guns and all these things cannot withstand the power of the mind. <coughs> the greatest weapon that man has and he does not know it is the weapon of his own mind. And this will eventually come into operation. Man will begin to know and recognize that the power is beyond anything. It's the power that is within his mind. Then there will be a battle of minds. But who will win? The Christ, of course. The only begotten Son of God. The Word that was with God. The Word that was God. And the Word that was made flesh remains immortal. That is the only power that will retain itself to cause it is love. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Bless them that curse you. Do good unto those that injure you. These are the precepts given by a master that knew the great forces that were inherent with man himself, either to destroy him or to make him. Then the Almighty will be a joy to thee. 
And thou shalt lift up thy face to God. Benediction. O mighty perfect one, thou hast created me in thy bosom with the same life which is thine eternal. Little did I know that thy power of creation was centered within me. Through my ignorance I set in motion forces that imprisoned me. When I awoke from my natal slumber as a child awakens to know its mother, so did I know thee as my father, mother of God. Since then, O mighty perfect one, I have allowed thy thought only to flow in and out of my consciousness, creating within thee as thou hast decreed, for we are one. Now I understand what Jesus said, I and the Father are one, O perfect. Now let us enter into the